In this video, we're going to take a look at this King Super 20 tenor saxophone. I'm going to give it a detailed review from a mechanic's perspective and from a player's perspective. At the end of the video, I'll give it a play test and we'll have an up-close video of it. Let's get started. The King Super 20 has a very big free-blowing sound. It's very powerful and it's a semi-focused sound. They were built between 1945 and about the late 1970s. The intonation on a King Super 20 tends to be very good. However, I have had some examples where the intonation has some weird notes and I recommend if you're looking for one of these, be sure to play them thoroughly before you purchase because I have had a few that have intonation issues. The lacquer on these early Super 20s, this one's a 1952, tends to be darker like this. They have a lot of beautiful, extensive graving. They even engraved the pad cups. This one has a B and B flat. I've seen them where the low C sharp, C, and E flat are engraved as well with this nice floral engraving. These are really well built horns. They're built to last. They're built as good as anything today. They have single post construction. So each post is soldered on individually. You'll see that term single post or ribbed. Ribbed means there's a solid piece of brass on most of the posts and the posts are soldered onto that brass and then the brass then that rib is soldered onto the body those are more stable and more sturdy however single post construction is is still a well-built horn a lot of older saxophones have the single post construction and there's no issues with that at all setting these horns up is a little more complicated than modern horn the pivot screws have lock nuts on them so when you when you turn the pivot screw in to get rid of the key play after it's, you get the horn set up right, then you put the lock nut on to lock that pivot screw to keep it from turning and wiggling. And what happens inevitably is you end up moving that screw a little bit and, and tighten up that key too much where it binds. So that does take a little more time. Once they're set up, they're really reliable and the, that's a, a great mechanism. Um, they don't use that anymore, but it, it does work. It's very functional. It just takes a little bit more time to set up. Same thing with the table keys. This has kind of a complicated table key setup. It does take a little time to get the key venting right and it's a little tricky. Uh, once they're set up, they feel great. They're, they're long lasting. It's not like they're, they're high maintenance or anything, but, but they do take a little time. And same thing with the octave key. It has a, a weird octave key, a little different, and it does take a little time to get set up. But once it's set up, very functional, works very well. Some of the beauty features on this saxophone is all the keys on these earlier ones had a pearl inlay which just makes this horn beautiful man and so you have pearl inlays on the side keys the octave key the palm keys the g sharp key and the earlier ones came with a solid silver neck and an underslung octave key the later ones a solid silver neck was an option and then the really late ones had an overslung octave key Another option you get was a, a silver sonic which had a solid silver neck and a solid silver bell. Those are pretty rare and they're a little bit more expensive. I owned one and they, they were great horns. Um, so an earlier Super 20s were made in Cleveland, Ohio. The later ones, were after they were bought out by UMI, were made in Eastlake, Ohio. My Super 20 silver sonic was made in, in Eastlake and it was a fantastic plain horn. I really liked it. Um, if you buy an Eastlake horn, they're typically a little cheaper, so that's a good option to, to look at if you're looking for a Super 20. These horns typically like a medium-high key height, a little lower than, say, a Con or a Selmer, and they respond really well to that. This horn, I put flat metal resonators in it. I don't think it needs that, but that's just kind of what I put in these horns. It looks real traditional and original. Um, I've put domed metal. You have to raise the key height a little bit, when you put a domed resonator in. However, it's not enough to, to be super noticeable. So I typically just put a flat metal because I like how it looks. There were seven series of this saxophone, one through six, but the first one had a one and a one A, and the one A was they called transitional. And this one's a series two. The one A had a, a tricky table key that it doesn't feel like a modern saxophone. So the, the, the one A does take a little bit to get used to but the 1As play really well. If you can get a 1A, I, lo I love those horns. This one's a two, and 
it's fantastic as well. Let's move on to the rating system. Oh, and if you don't mind, please subscribe. So there, I have a rating system I'm developing. It's from zero to 100. This saxophone received a 79 out of 100. And let's get started on how I came to that number. Oh, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a quick play test and have an up close video of all the beautiful features of this saxophone. On to the rating. Intonation, seven out of 10. This example plays great and it has perfect intonation. However, there are some models that, that are inconsistent, so I gave it a seven out of 10. Sound quality, nine out of 10. Big, powerful sound. Most saxophones, as long as the sound quality is, is great, it'll get a nine out of 10. Build quality, a nine out of 10. Really well built saxophones. Ease of adjustments and setup, six out of 10. They're complicated to set up in certain spots, table keys, octave key, and the lock nuts. Value and resale. These are, tend to be more expensive than other vintage saxophones. However, they hold their value and these horns have been rising in value for years and will continue to do so in my opinion. That receives a 9 out of 10. Cosmetic looks and finish, 7 out of 10. These horns are beautiful, however the lacquer on these is very fragile. Most of them don't look as good as this one. This one is original. Ease of finding parts, 5 out of 10. Most vintage saxophones will get a 5 out of 10 or maybe lower. There is a company, I think it's called um, Sax Stuff in the UK. They're making some reproduction parts for this. However, not all the parts are easily found. And with especially with the all the table keys that have changed over the years and other parts that have changed, they're really hard to find parts for. Ease of finding a case, nine out of 10. This saxophone will fit in most modern cases. Some saxophones have a left hand bell key with the keys on the left side. Some saxophones have a opposing bell keys where the keys are on both sides. This saxophone is on the right side like modern horns are built today. So they're actually easy to find a case for, nine out of 10. Cool factor, 10 out of 10. That's a great score. It doesn't get much cooler than a King Super 20. They're they're rare, so not everybody plays them, but but all a lot of the greats have played these horns. Sonny Rollins, Charlie Ventura, Charlie Parker, Cannonball Adderley, Johnny Griffin, and many more, as well as modern musicians. Factory materials, eight out of ten. Overall, uh, all the materials on the saxophone are are really good quality. Um, and what I'm referring to is just the quality of brass, the quality of uh, the steel used in the screws, the springs, um, in this case, silver. Everything is, is really good quality, so eight out of 10. That leaves us with the score of 79 out of 100. Thanks for watching. My name's Scott Reed. I'm a woodwind repair technician. I buy, sell, trade, and collect musical instruments. I play music professionally, and now I have a YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.